in and calling in. Again, LA Third Church on behalf of Reverend Gerald and myself and all of our practitioners and just family, we bless you and we thank you for your love and your continuous support. So before we get into our message, our theme, I'll tell a little funny. It says that a little girl dressed in her Sunday best was running as fast as she could, trying not to be late for church. And as she ran, she prayed. She said, dear Lord, do not let me be late. And she said it over and over, dear Lord, please don't let me be late. And as she was running and praying, she tripped on a curb and fell, getting her pretty dress all dirty up. She got up, she brushed herself off and started running again. So as she ran, she once again began to pray. She said, dear Lord, please don't let me be late for church. She said, but please Lord, don't push me either. All right, as we move into our theme, synchronicity, and then our chapter 18, Law of Attraction. We heard last week that synchronicity is a feeling and a being one with the universe, a spiritual connection as well as a physical connection. Synchronicity is to sense the unity of all. In chapter 18, Law of Attraction, it is about what we think, what we bring, how we attract, what we make upon the universe, the calls that we make, the order that we place on that menu of life. Ernest Holmes was talking about how you can attract success and personality. Ernest Holmes says that at all times, we are either drawing to us or repelling we are asking for or pushing away. In other words, there is a power. We use it or abuse it. We prove it or lose it. So I ask that we wake up to the fact that we are the manager. We are the producers of our lives. We are the supervisors. We are responsible for our journey. Our mental capacity, our consciousness, awareness, understanding is our treasure chest. When we look inside that mental capacity, that consciousness, what shall we find? So if we're not inviting our peace, right relationships, wealth, health, then we are allowing confusion, division, lack, dis-ease, thoughts of failure to find us. It says that if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. So what are you calling forth in your life? When circumstances and challenges show up, what do you say? What do you do? In chapter 18, it says we live in mind and it can only return to us what we think into it for it is done unto us as we believe. God has given each a power to utilize as one wishes. So let us remember God is the silent power behind all things, always ready to pour into our experience that which we need, but we must call it forth. Every business, every place, every person has a certain mental atmosphere, an aura, an energy, a vibration of its own. Wherever you go, you know how you feel when you're there. Whoever you meet, you have an idea. There's an energy. There's an exchange of this vibration that you feel good or you don't. The atmosphere that we bring to the table, the atmosphere that we enter into decides what is drawn unto it. For instance, a successful person does not go around thinking or feeling failure. A whole healthy minded person does not think sickness or disease. 
A prosperity-minded person does not go around thinking poverty or lack. If you desire to have a fulfilling relationship, then you need to attract it. It doesn't mean that we may not go through ups and downs and challenges and changes in life. We're going through it right now. But it says, what type of mind are you investigating, carrying, giving your energy and vibration to? So when the body says something to you and it's out of alignment of how you want to feel, you must have a wholeness of mind to speak to the body. If our money is funny, we must have a consciousness of prosperity to speak to it. Rich people file for bankruptcy all the time because they have a consciousness that I may not have this now or it may went someplace else, but I know that I can get it back because the universe is filled with everything that we need. I was reading an article, Raymond Hollowell, his book is Working with the Law. And he talks on the disparity between desire and expectation. When it comes to law of attraction, he says, desire represents what we say we want, a goal. Whereas expectation is whether we really believe we can achieve it, we can have it, we can experience it, we can express it, whatever it is. If you need a healing in your body, a transformation, a renewal, when you affirm it and it's your desire, are you really expecting it? It's only when the mind opens up to receive the wisdom and the blessings and the infinite intelligence of God that our blessings can find us. We always have the opportunity to synchronize with the universe, to go mentally shopping in God's reservoir of blessings. We have that opportunity every moment. And the moment that we say, I can't because of this or that, sure enough, you can't. But the moment that you say, I can, because there's a spirit, a power, a presence, a wisdom, an infinite intelligence within me that I can call it forth. In those times when it appears our prayers, our desires, our goals are not fulfilled, we may utter, I didn't really expect to get it anyway. I knew it wouldn't happen or they wouldn't do this, that or the other. For a lot of us, our dreams and desires and goals without expectations makes room for doubt, fear, disappointment, which leads to, un to an unfulfilled life experience. So we must have that consciousness and belief. Often we base our beliefs on decisions we've made in the past that has come true from experiences we've created. When we make decisions, we express our opinions and perceptions unconsciously, we then look for examples to prove them true. For instance, if we believe that we really don't deserve to have nice things, we may find when we get them, they get stolen, broken, destroyed, or tarnished in some way, because unconsciously there's something telling you that you don't deserve, or you really can't have, or you can't keep. And so the law of attraction, that aura, that vibration, that energy, what you're sinking your mind into has to show up for you because you are writing an unwritten thing about yourself. We have to keep consciousness. And then what about relationships based on prior relationships? We unconsciously expect them to do something that will sever the relationship. So we're saying that we want this right relationship, this perfect person. But when we meet somebody, we're unconsciously expecting 
for something to happen, for the other shoe to drop based on the past, not even based on what's possible. So I pray that you understand what I'm saying, that our consciousness what we're synchronizing with, the law of attraction is going to bring and mirror to us everything that we're thinking and feeling. We cannot hide it. It has to show up. It's the law. So that's why it's so important that our consciousness stay on high, even in the midst of challenges and situations. A story, we write our own story without allowing God to bless it, infuse it, prosper it, transform it, heal it, sustain it. So it is with this, with this pandemic and this race war, we reinforce it, we fuel it, we continuously feed it. I will tell you this, uh, a little story. Uh, Reverend Paul's youngest brother, he has a four-year-old son, our nephew. And even though I really didn't like what he said, I thought he was really telling a truth. So he was doing something that probably a four-year-old shouldn't be doing. And his mother said something to him. And this four-year-old said to her, don't look at me, look, look at yourself. And I didn't like how it came out because he's a four-year-old, but he was telling the truth out of the mouths of babes. He was saying what we all should be doing. We're so busy looking at others, commenting, criticizing, judging, when all the work, the only work we can do is on self, and then we can be a demonstration. So with this stuff that's going on now, we are reinforcing, and I know it's not LA Third Church people, but you know those people that are reinforcing with anxiousness, with what we hear on a day-to-day -day basis from the news on what we fear about this thing, what the appearance of it says. And then it just becomes a vicious cycle because there's already a challenge worldwide. So we don't need to feed that challenge is already there. The question is, what are we willing to do about it? And of course, we have to limit ourselves. We have to distance ourselves. We have to put on extra gear. But what about the consciousness? What about sending out affirmative prayers, words of power, words of healing? If something doesn't challenge us, it can't change us. When we're comfortable, we're not willing and not even looking to move. So it's only when the challenges come that we can really bring about a change. Our mentality is what created our experiences. Therefore, our mentality is what's going to fix it. So it's what we're holding in consciousness, what we're talking about all the time. Margaret Stortz says, truthfully, no one can prove to you that God exists. No one can hand you a written guarantee signed by God, but it's just as true that no one can prove that God doesn't exist either. And I will say this, that we can look around nature, we can look at the greenery, the mountains. So nature is always showing us every moment that there is a power, an infinite wisdom, a deity, a magnificence that's on our side. Our beingness, everything about us is a great demonstration. When you look at your body, you can scratch yourself. And within moments, and in a day, it's gone. There's something happening within us every second of every moment of every hour. So it tells us that there is this power that's working through us, as us, for us. And that's where your law of attraction and your mentality, your consciousness is so important because this power, this energy vibes off of what we're thinking. 
our consciousness is very important. When you think about your heart beating, there is a power that's beating it for us. Our blood is flowing. We have nails that grow. We have hair that grow. So there's definitely this magnificent power that can transform and renew and bring to us our good. May we, in this moment, dig deeper to truly find out how we and the universe relate to each other. Can we dig deeper into what's possible through spirit, love, and faith? Listen, family, we can change the dynamics. We are metaphysicians. And how we do that is by operating our five steps of treatment, never forgetting that we have spiritual medication at our disposal. Recognition, unification, realization, gratitude, and release. And we got to realize that when we are giving a spiritual mind treatment, and it's also known as affirmative prayer, scientific prayer, or simply treatment, we come to the realization that within the universe, there is one infinite power, universal presence that permeates everything. And therefore, this presence being everywhere has to be right where we are as well. So with this attitude of mind, we reach an acceptance of new possibilities in life. We are able to see, feel, and speak of the good we desire as already ours. Then we let the universe work it all out. A treatment is not about convincing God to do something for us. It is becoming aware of the God presence within us. So on that first step, recognition. This is where we acknowledge that within the universe, there is one pervading presence, one energy from which all things are made of. That that creates everything out of itself. And it creates out of consciousness, out of mind. We're not talking about fate and coincidence. We're talking about synchronizing with the thing that created us, that called each of us forth. With our mind, we can bring forth, create anything through the power of God that is within us. And that's the beauty of it. We don't have to go anywhere to go and get it. It is right where we are. It is what we are. Second step, unification. Having recognized the awesome power of the one presence located everywhere, we then unify our consciousness with that perfect intelligence. So recognition and unification means that there's a contract. That means that we've come together. Our consciousness has came together with the infinite wisdom. And then our third step, realization. This is about declaring your desire, your need, your dream. And we're doing it in the present tense. We're not talking about yesterday or tomorrow. We got to say and speak our word in the now. God is now and we are now. Move from wanting and needing to having, to speaking already done in consciousness. That's the realization. So acknowledging that there's a presence and a power and then sinking yourself, hooking yourself, allowing yourself to allow it to utilize you, you then speak your word. Your word is just as powerful as any master teacher, the master teacher. So utilize your word with confidence and expectation. Fourth step, being thankful, acceptance, gratitude. It's where I summon, listen to me, it is where we summon from within ourselves a feeling of acceptance. For my attitude of gratitude opens the consciousness to receiving. So that which I affirm, that which I need, that I declared, 
I'm accepting that it's mine. When I focus on the good that already exists, then it can't help but I can't help but to attract more good. So when we can really utilize this spiritual prescription, which is the five steps of treatment, very simple, but very powerful. So after recognizing that there is a presence and a power, after opening our consciousness and utilizing that wisdom that's continuously flowing, and then realizing that all things are possible through my faith and my word and my affirmation, through that power of God, then I'm absolutely grateful. First, that there is a power for me to utilize. Then that power allows me to hook up with it. Matter of fact, it loves me so much, it made me out of itself. And then I can call forth, and then I can be grateful. And then that last step, our fifth step, is then release. Once we have accomplished the four previous steps, when we have declared our truth, now we trust. We release to the wisdom and the love of the universe. We allow spirit to handle the details, getting ourselves out of the way. You know how it says, getting your bloated nothingness out of the way. God doesn't need our instruction. All God needs is for us to open our mouth and speak our desire. And then trust the universe to get it done. So my treatment would sound something like this. I am aware that my God, my good, is available to me now. God is in me and I am in God. Because I know my thoughts create my reality, I think and allow wholeness, peace, wisdom, prosperity in all areas, as well as divine right action to demonstrate through me to me. I am thankful for the creative power of the law at work in my life and the world in which I live. So I release the spiritual treatment knowing that it cannot and will not return to me void. Or your spiritual mind treatment, your affirmative prayer can be as simple as this. Because whatever these five steps, whatever this prescription, and whatever the antidote or the dosage that you need, you utilize these steps. Because these are steps, when you step up steps, you're moving forward. This is about spiritual growth. If you move from one step to the next, to the next, to the next, you can arrive at your destination. So your spiritual mind treatment can be as simple as God is all there is. I am one with it. My, and whatever you fill in the blank, my health is perfect. My finances overflows, fill in the blank. So God is all there is and I am one with my. It's, it's declared, I give thanks, I let it go. And as I receive, and so it is. So it doesn't have to be long and drawn out. Whatever helps you, assist you in truly trusting this power, you must utilize it. When we look at what's going on in our world and we're feeling the devastation around the world, the world is telling us those that believe, those that are truth seekers, those that know something greater than the appearance, than what we're hearing, the world needs us to step it up. And we are, with all the metaphysicians, all the different religions and spiritual journeys that are out there, we should be able to bring a healing to all of it. But we must believe. We must be that energy, that vibration, that aura that sinks in with the powerful good that's in the world. We can bring order back to our world. Just think if all of us woke up every morning 
speaking that our world is renewed, is transformed, there is happiness, there is joy, there is unity. If we say it long enough, it picks up momentum. And the next thing we know, a pandemic is gone. Race war is gone. I know it's been here, it seemed like forever, but all things are possible with God. In our spiritual journey, we can't slice and dice what we say. We got to believe it and stand on it and not fall for what they call the okie doke but to stand for truth and righteousness. Stand for it. Speak it. Believe that it's possible because when we come together speaking and seeing the same thing, because that mentality got us where we were. It was so much hurt, so much devastation, so much hatred that the pandemic is showing up as those feelings and those thoughts. So we can turn this around. And I tell you, some good stuff is coming out of this. Our millennials and the Ys and the Y2Ks and everything else that the newer generation is calling themselves, they are fired up. And it had to take something like this to get them to see and want a better world in their generation. Kids are seeing their parents more than they ever have, therefore feeling more love and feeling more hope. They're learning more things. They have hands on. They're learning how to cook and sew and make jewelry and take care of themselves. We used to have that and the schools took it out and the parents was too busy to do it because a parent would leave six or seven in the morning, come back at six or seven in the evening, fix dinner, if you got dinner, and they would do it all over again. So there's some good going on in the world, even through the appearance of all of this other stuff. And if we can just pick up the good, be that law of attraction for good, then we can pick up momentum with the good and get rid of this that's truly not real. We're feeling it, but we can change it. And as Reverend Paul told you last month, if it was absolutely true, then you couldn't change it. So we utilize the truth of God to change those conditions that are out of divine right action and right order. So as I, as I come to a close, family, let's be reminded of what our teaching, what this movement requires of each of us. This teaching and all of those new thought pioneers and the master teachers that really give us rise in this educational, we got to remember this movement is about people taking conscious responsibility for their own lives and not blaming others for their challenges. This teaching is people who deliberately decide to learn and grow. This teaching is people seeing problems as lessons which easily come blessings. This teaching is people who believe we are what we think and can change ourselves by changing our thinking. This teaching is people that feel they can change the world by changing themselves and not by trying to change others. This teaching is people who search for strength from the universe by going inside themselves. This teaching is people that recognize love doesn't have to have conditions attached. This teaching is people loving and knowing themselves in order to better know and love others. This teaching is people who sees others as not better than nor less than, but rather different than, yet part of the same whole. This teaching is people that choose their own path rather than follow dogma. This teaching is people honoring your right to your own path, not theirs. It's people who realize that now is all we have since yesterday is just a thought and so is tomorrow. This teaching is people interested in owning themselves, not others, and not just things. This teaching 
is people who see joy in life rather than pain. Having experienced enough pain already, we don't need any more. This teaching is people curious about universal, universal synchronicity. This teaching, our life journey, is not about gloom and doom. And it's not to say that we are not concerned with the ecology and the economics and the other forces that affect our world, but our consciousness and taking our spiritual medication in the way of affirmative prayer and our spiritual mind treatment, utilizing the steps that brought us into this teaching, we can change our circumstances. This teaching is not a movement based on guilt, anger, fear, or hurt. It is a journey toward that love that God has for each of us. This teaching in our life journey is not allegiance to one master. It is learning from many enlightened teachers in the quest for the oneness of God. This teaching, it is not just humans doing, it is humans being. Synchronicity, to align yourself with this universal spiritual truth that will never leave nor forsake you. Law of attraction is the aura, the atmosphere, the energy, and the vibration that we carry with us every moment of the day. Wherever you are going, wherever you find yourself, you are saying something to the world and to the atmosphere in which you occupy. And your mind power, your consciousness, your thought will mirror it right back to you. I ask today that you overlook once again these spiritual mind treatment steps and you utilize them every moment of every day or when you hear something that's disturbing or when you see something or when you feel something, speak your word to turn it around. I thank you all for your continuous love and support of this ministry. I bless you and I say this, things are getting better and better, but it needs each of us to speak positive, constructive, words, powerful words of affirmations. Peace and abundant blessings to all of you. Thank you. How do you feel? Good, great. Well, this is the time that we get to share, we get to plant a seed, we get to give as we've been given. And we know that when we plant a seed of wealth and thanksgiving, it returns to us a hundredfold, a thousandfold, a millionfold. So let us take our offerings and let us bless them and give thanks for all that God has given knowing that as we continue to support, it can only get better. The Spirit of God moves us to higher heights. So I give thanks for it. I bless it all. I bless the giver. Amen. And so it is. So let us welcome now our musical treatment from our Ron Bishop, our Trevor Ware, and our Dexter Story. <laughs> 